guys, it's the Steph coming at ya from New Hampshire for Rickbridge.com. In the news today, Paul McCartney will reclaim the publishing rights to the Beatles catalog. In 1984, he lost a high-profile bid with Michael Jackson, but the British copyright law will inevitably give him the rights to the songs uh, since 10 years' time. And in an interview, McCartney says the biggest advantage is playing songs live, because he used to need to play Sony ATV Records. A royalty every time he wanted to perform one of his songs. So that's going to be super cool. On Tuesday of this week, Sean Lennon, the youngest son of legendary John Lennon, released his newest CD called Friendly Fire, and I just so happened to have picked up my very own copy. Um, so I thought I would let you guys know how awesome this is, really. This album is really cool. Um, it's about, the songs are written about um, the situation he had. Uh, his girlfriend of a long time cheated on him with his best friend. And while trying to cope with that, the best friend died, so he never really got to get over it with him. So he wrote the song as kind of a release and kind of way to get, you know, around it in a way. Um, and if you notice, it's it, the record is in memory of his best friend. Um, the CD booklet uh, is usually filled with like song lyrics and stuff and, and information and words and pictures and stuff but his are um, of his own illustrations like this bunny and you know him dancing around. Um, if you can notice by the binding it's a two disc set um, one CD is labeled music, and the next one is labeled film. Uh, he did some artsy videos that really connect with each other to make some sort of like a movie for this record um, as kind of a special thing. Uh, they can be taken as either individual music videos or be watched be watched um, to form some sort of a movie. Uh, I watched it last night and it is incredible. <laughs> it's very well done. He's, he, he's a really good actor. You know, you wouldn't think of it like, oh, you were born into music and stuff like that, but no, he's a really good actor. Um, and you think the first three are completely random, but at the end everything really connects and it's really cool. It really gives you deeper insight. He took part in writing all the songs on here, every single one. Um, some were co-written, but most were written just by him. And it says in the back, uh, Sean Lennon is credited for playing guitar, bass, piano, keyboards, voice box, drums on Friendly Fire, and then there's three other people who play instruments. So he had a huge part of this. It was also produced by him, if you see on the back cover, it says produced by Sean Lennon. Um, so this is really Sean, you know? <laughs> it's fantastic it's fantastic to see someone involved in their record, especially with a major label like Capitol. Um, I would love to show you guys some clips from his film, but uh, I'm afraid I'd be infringing on copyright. So. I think I'm just going to attach a little bit of the trailer of his CD, which is uh, all over, so I think that would be pretty safe to just show you guys that.
after uh, listening to the CD and getting to know who Sean Lennon is, I realized that there were some similarities between me and him that were just really very cool. Um, let's get on with the most obvious ones. Uh, he wears glasses similar to what his father wore. And when I was in fifth grade and I first got glasses, I got glasses that look like my dad's too. Um, but then I got contacts, so that doesn't really count, does it? Uh, my nose is pierced, and his nose is pierced. But the coolest fact that bonds me and Sean together is that Sean was born on John Lennon's 35th birthday on October 9th, and I was born on my dad's 33rd birthday on November 8th. So, we both share our dad's birthdays. The U.S. vs. John Lennon is a documentary about John Lennon's involvement in the anti-war movement and how it threatened the Nixon administration. The documentary includes information on how Nixon tried to deport John and also how the FBI followed John around and how the FBI refused to release their 281 pages of information about John until a 1997 court case where all but 10 were released. The documentary was a hit at film festivals but has yet to be released widely since its um, September release. Some fun facts about the late and great legendary John Lennon. The bigger than Jesus controversy. Uh, during an interview with his very good friend Maureen Cleave, uh, John w just was off the cuff and said, Christianity will go. It will vanish and shrink. I don't know what will go first. Rock and roll or Christianity? We're more popular than Jesus now. Um, and that was printed in the lovely Evening Standard by Maureen Cleave, the friend. But it didn't really get much attention until it was re partially reprinted on a teen magazine date book five months later, um, where public burnings of Beatles albums and memorabilia took place. Lennon later apologized and the church accepted his apology and it just kind of blew over and took its place in history. The pressure began to be too much for the Beatles to handle anyway, um, including a scare where a firework was thrown on stage and everyone thought someone was shooting at John. Um, so they never played a scheduled concert again as the Beatles. And John went on record to saying, I always remember to thank Jesus for the end of my touring days. John was the only one of the Beatles who did not host Saturday Night Live. John and Yoko were one of the very first celebrity couples to really um, combine their public identities. John stated that they were not John and Yoko, but they were in fact John and Yoko. Um, I think that if they were a celebrity couple of today, Us Weekly would probably love to call them Joko. John was a big fan of wordplay, often changing the lyrics to I want to hold your hand to I want to hold your gland during concerts, since the crowd was so loud that no one could hear them anyway. With the regret of not having a relationship with his first son Julian, John retired for five years to take care of his son Sean and become a house husband. Um, he did release a album with Yoko called Double Fantasy that was released six months before his untimely death, which included a song for Sean called Beautiful Boy. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 